Hello and welcome to Business 360. I am Ashmit Kumar and here are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. The sell-off intensifies on the Lal Street. Sensex and Nifty lose over a percent. Mid-caps plunge once again with the index declining by 5% in the last two sessions. Rupee hits a record low against the dollar. Hyundai India lists at a discount after making history as the country's biggest IPO. Hyundai's global CEO plans to double R&D capacity in India, expects electric cars to account for 10% of sales in India by 2030. Adani Zambuja Cement acquires Orient Cement for over 8,000 crore rupees. This is the third major cement acquisition by the Adani Group in the last 10 months following Sanghi Cements and Penna Cement. Germany's Allianz is planning to end a 23-year-old insurance partnership with Bajaj Finsav. Allianz says it is actively considering an exit from general and life insurance joint ventures. CNBC TV18 Newsbreak confirmed the board of Zomato approves a billion-dollar fundraise likely to take domestic shareholding above 50%. Zomato reports a five-fold increase in Q2 profits, even as it warns of heightened competition in quick commerce. Shares of Paytm's parent company slides over 5% after a disappointing second quarter. Revenues declined by 34%. Sale of ticketing business to Zomato helped turn a profit. Without the deal, losses would have widened by 70%. Government sources say profits of city gas distribution companies are likely to normalize after a reduction in allocation of cheap gas at administered prices. Petroleum Minister Hardeep Puri dismisses speculation surrounding city gas distribution companies hiking prices. FNO cannot be and should not be a national pastime. SEBI board member Ashwini Bhatia defends imposing stricter rules on futures and options, says FNO cannot be a national pastime and calls on investors to make serious investments. Israel declares a state of emergency in capital Tel Aviv after Hezbollah claims to have hit multiple targets. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken arrives in Israel to hold talks. More than 100 people killed in Gaza overnight and 13 killed near a hospital in Beirut as Israeli airstrikes continue. PM Modi arrives in Russia to attend the BRICS summit. All eyes on a potential meeting between China and Xi Jinping after both nations agree to resume patrolling. The contested border after four years. No official word from the Indian government on a possible meeting with the Chinese president. Indigo and Air India received a flurry of hoax bomb threats yesterday. More than 130 flights have received hoax threats in the last eight days, plunging the aviation industry into a state of panic. Well, the stocks got battered on the last street. The Nifty fell by over 1% to breach the 24,500 mark, ending at its lowest level since August of 14th. The mid-cap uh, sell-off also intensified. That index saw cuts of over 5% in just the last two trading sessions. 13 lakh crore rupees of investor wealth has been wiped out in two sessions. Prashant Nair is joining us now with more details. Prashant, uh, a troubled week here for the market. Tell us more. A crunching fall for the markets, especially in the broader markets, mid caps and small cap indices selling between, uh, selling off between two and three percent. For the Nifty as well, it was actually uh, pretty tough. Especially, it became uh, you know especially tough in the last 45, uh, 50 minutes of trade, uh, and uh, we basically on the Nifty broke below the lows of last Friday. Friday, remember, last Friday is when you had that big cut and that 300 point rebound from the day's low. That is gone. Uh, for the Nifty Bank, a little better at the margin because of private financials like ICICI Bank uh, and HFC Bank, which did not fall much. ICICI actually was uh, slightly higher. Uh, Mid-cap and small-cap indices are up on your screen as well. Other than that, sectorally, pockets of weakness, PSU banks, real estate and government companies. The Nifty CPC index was a big pain point uh, as well. Now, large caps on the Nifty, uh, BEL was a, a big cut. Mahindra and Mahindra lost Adani Enterprises, Coal India, State Bank of India and Tata Steel are some of the biggest losses that we saw on the Nifty. In terms of, uh, as I said, very few gainers, actually one or two, ICICI was one, Infi perhaps, flattish, 
uh, and one or two others. Otherwise, it was broadly a clean down day. Broader markets, uh, 10 is to 1. Uh, 10 declines outnumbering one advance. I mean, that essentially is the market breadth. That's how severe it was. So broader markets, uh, Mazgao Dock, Garden Reach, the shipbuilders lost sharply. Amber Enterprises, some of these are reversals. Amber went up, uh, uh, I think it was limit up yesterday, was down 10-11% uh, today. PNB, HFCL was a big loser today. There were Supreme Industries on the back of earnings. 360 won the wealth manager after earnings. Gravita, again, a big loser after earnings uh, as well. Hindustan Copper, Bombay Dying, Skipper Limited. Uh, you know, you had names like Jana Small Finance Bank, Inox Green, Tribhuvandas, that is TBZ, uh, SJS, Ixigo, which is, uh, you know, the travel uh, portal. Uh, some of these are some, the big volume-led losers today. Winners, I'll just highlight the big price gains uh, today. There was City Union Bank reacting to earnings. Unikim Laboratories is a big mover. And something like a Talbros Auto was up about 6% by close. Uh, but a pretty poor session uh, in the month so far, FPIs have been sellers of over $10 billion. And uh, so far, there doesn't seem to be very much respite. You know, uh, the ferocity of the sell-off means that we very quickly get to oversold levels. And then you're on a watch for a bounce. Uh, global markets are still trading pretty okay, no problems. Uh, but, uh, you know, given the damage in the broader market, sentiment now becomes a bit of an issue. Back to you. Right, Prashant, thanks a lot for that. The Nifty 50 there on your screens, down by a percent and a quarter. Let's shift, shift our focus to the currency market. The Indian rupee ended at a record low of 84.08 against the US dollar. The rupee breached the 84 mark in the last 10 days. Uh, the dollar index has been gathering strength, hitting its highest level in the last two months. Meanwhile, oil prices fell after gaining nearly 2% yesterday. The fall comes after top U.S. diplomats renewed efforts to push for a ceasefire in the Middle East and as slow demand in China weighed on the markets. The Brent is around $74 a barrel. Meanwhile, gold prices remain stable, hovering around record highs. This after gold prices saw an upward trajectory for the last five days amidst growing tensions in West Asia and uncertainties over U.S. elections. In international news, tensions in West Asia continue to simmer. Lebanon's Hezbollah launched a barrage of rockets into Israel, targeting positions in Tel Aviv's suburbs, which included an intelligence base. They also launched rockets targeting a naval base in North Israel's Haifa. The Israeli military claims there were no immediate reports of injuries. At least 13 people, meanwhile, were killed and 57 injured after Israel attacked Beirut's main government hospital on Monday. Another 57 people were injured in the strike near Lebanon's biggest public hospital, located a few kilometers from the city center. Israeli missiles continue to rain down on Gaza, with 115 people losing their lives in the last 24 hours alone. More than 42,700 people have been killed in Gaza in the last one year, according to the local authorities. The head of the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees has said that accused Israel of weaponizing aid and blocking workers from breaching besieged areas. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has landed in Israel to hold talks with officials amidst intensified attacks between Israeli army and Hezbollah. This is also Blinken's first visit to the region since Israel army killed Hamas chief Yahya Sinwar last week. Well, back home, it was a tepid debut on the bonuses for Hyundai Motors India, the nation's largest public offer. The stock listed at a discount of 1.5% on its issue price of 1960 per share. The stock continued to slide, ending the day more than 7% in the red. Brokerage firms, including Nomura and Macquarie, are bullish on the stock and have issued a buy call on the stock. However, MK has initiated a coverage on the stock, citing that the sharp uh, share may drop 11% from its IPO price. Speaking exclusively to CNBC TV 18, Hyundai's global CEO Jade Chang said that the company will double up on their R&D capacity in India for full car development for Asian and emerging markets. He added that Hyundai could have 10% of India's sales come from its EV portfolio by 2030. The Hyundai leadership also dismissed concerns of cannibalization from Kia and said that Hyundai will continue to compete and continue having synergies with Kia. So if you see, okay, let's see the market penetration is about 2%. Yeah. But we are starting and we are putting the more EVs now. And uh, up to uh, year 2030, we are expecting about uh, five EV models running in, in, in this market. 
we are expecting about 10%. We believe with the addition of capacity, which is almost, if you see, 30% capacity addition is happening for HMI in the next three years. And this is after a gap of more than 10 years. So I think this is a big moment uh, for the growth of HMI going forward. And we believe that, yes, not only in terms of volume, but the strategy of premiumization, the strategy of ad adding features, you know, and then, you know, uh, meeting the ex expectation of the customers will help us to really sustain the volume as well as profitability. We believe that we are in a position to really, you know, uh, grow in line with the market in terms of volume and, of course, always uh, in terms of average selling price to continuously go up. And well, you can catch that entire conversation with Hyundai Motor India leadership at 5 and 9.30 p.m. right here on CNBC TV 18. Now, SEBI board member Ashwini Bhatia has defended imposing stricter rules on trading in futures and options. Bhatia has said that FNO cannot be a national pastime and called on investors to make serious investments. We are number one and globally also more than 50% of the FNO volume happens in India. This is a crown we do not wish to wear. FNO cannot be and should not be a national pastime, which actually means that savings of retail participants move into the pockets of institutional hands. Now, 197 Communications, the parent company of payment aggregator Paytm, reported its second quarter numbers. The firm saw a net profit of 930 crore rupees versus a loss of 290 crore rupees for the same period last year. However, the net profit was aided by a one-time gain of 1,345 crore rupees due to the sale of its movie ticketing business to Zomato. If excluded, Paytm's losses would have been 415 crore rupees higher than last year. Meanwhile, revenue fell by 34% on a yearly basis to 1,660 crore rupees. The stock slipped over 5%. And Zomato has reported nearly a five-fold increase in profits in the second quarter to 176 crore rupees. The food aggregator has reported a 68% increase in revenue to nearly 4,800 crore rupees. From reporting an EBITDA loss of 47 crore rupees last year, Sumato has now reported a positive EBITDA of 226 crores. Well, staying with Zomato, a CNBC TV 18 news break has been confirmed. The company's board has approved a fundraise plan worth 8,500 crore rupees. Nimesh Shah joining us now with more details. Nimesh. Yes, the CNBC Newsbreak has confirmed Zomato board has actually approved a billion dollar fundraising via QIP, which is around 8,500 crores. I understand from sources that maybe in the next couple of weeks, the board, uh, the, uh, the company will launch the QIP. Now, the most important part is this, this QIP will be largely been addressed to the domestic investors. The idea of this fundraising, because the company is already sitting on cash, this particular fundraising was to, uh, you know, give the shares to the domestic shareholders by virtue of which the combined FDI, FI holding falls below 50%. Currently, the FI holding is close to 50.5%. And after the fundraising, which will, which will see a dilution of close to 3 odd percent, uh, the expectation is that the FI holding will fall below, below 49%. This is more, most important because of, uh, you know, Blinkit falls under the FDI regulations. After the combined holding falls below uh, for 50%, which is around 49 odd percent, uh, there will be much ease for Blinkit to do the business. Uh, and that's the reason why, and that's the prime reason that Zomato has bought to approve a billion dollar fundraising via QIP. Right, Nimesh, thanks a lot for that. With that, slipping into a very short break, but coming up, government sources say profits of city gas distribution companies are likely to normalize after a reduction in allocation of cheaper gas at administrated prices. Details when we come back.
Welcome back. Now, Bajaj Finsav has announced that its German partner, Allianz, is actively considering exiting the life and general insurance joint ventures. And that after nearly 23 years. Yash Jain joining us now with more. Yash, uh, I think we'll just try connecting with Yash in just a bit. Uh, we're getting a patchy line there. Uh, he'll share with us more details as to the reasons behind uh, this breakup, the reason behind Allianz looking for an exit. Uh, but moving ahead, India's consumer protection watchdog has sent notices uh, to Zepto, Blinkit and nine other e-commerce and Q-commerce companies. Sources say the CCPA has sent notices for alleged violations of mandatory declaration rules, selling products without mandatory information like manufacturing and expiry dates. Uh, Swiggy Instamart, Misho, MyGlam and Snapdeal are the other companies to which notices have been sent. Meanwhile, smart lock screen platform Glance has partnered with Swiggy Instamart to launch a one-tap purchase feature. The feature will allow users to place orders and pay directly from the lock screen. Essentially, users can click on branded promotional content on the Glance screen, which then takes them to the corresponding product page on Swiggy Instamart. Instantly, this feature has already been rolled out for five consumer brands. The brands claim to have already seen an increase in sales. Well, some news now from the national capital. Government sources have said that city gas distribution companies' profits are likely to normalize after a reduction in allocation of cheaper gas at administered prices. Sapna Das joining us now with more details. Uh, Sapna, what are your sources telling you? Well, a very clear view seems to be emerging in the government circles and that is basically the fact that the recent 20% cut in the subsidized gas share uh, for CG players, well, this is only likely to normalize their profits. This is going to be a margin play. Uh, you know, basically it's the margins that could be impacted going forward and it's not that they're going to start making losses. Uh, so going forward, uh, maybe the market expectations in terms of the profitability of the CDD sector, that needs to be more nuanced. It's also a fact of matter that, uh, you know, India is witnessing around uh, an 8% decline, a natural decline in gas production and that will somewhere start showing uh, in terms of the various players which are sourcing this gas at cheap rates. The second aspect is that the government is also not very clear that you know that there is a proper a pass through mechanism that the CD players are adopting in terms of the pricing. For instance, they're pricing, they, they are sourcing the gas at administered rates, very cheap administered rates, but they're selling it at market rates. So, uh, you know, where is the pass through in terms of the uh, consumer reliefs? That's the second element. Last but not the least, the government is also claiming that they have actually cut the gas share of a lot of important sectors like gas power plants and internal consumption of gas majors like Gale and uh, ONGC, and they have diverted that. Uh, for the priority sector CNG players. So then to turn around and say that no, the profitability is going to be very adversely impacted or there will be a requirement to raise prices, probably that needs to be tempered on the part of the CDB players. This is the view as of now. We'll have to keep a, wait, we'll have to keep a watch on how the situation pans, uh, pans out going forward. These things, things oh, keep yeah. happening up and down here like that. What is the yeah. issue? There's an expectation that companies may raise prices. Who, they will, sir. Which they one? Pay. Which one? Which one? Tell me. Who's, ready? Who's, who's here is raising prices? Are the OMCs are not raising prices? Uh, there's an expectation that they may raise uh, prices. That will hamper uh, tell, them, tell, tell, tell them to talk to us directly, not come through the press. Well, the Indian Army Chief General Upendra Dwedi has said that Indian forces will disengage with Chinese troops in eastern Ladakh only after the status quo of April 2020 has been restored along the line of actual control. The Army Chief's comments come a day after India and China reached an agreement to resume patrolling operations across the contested border in eastern Ladakh. Speaking to the media, he added that India and China were able to convince and reassure each other to not breach into buffer zones that have been created. This marks a significant step in easing tensions between both the countries, especially after the 2022 uh, clashes between both armies. We want to go back to the status quo of April 2020. Point number one. Thereafter, we will be looking at disengagement, de-escalation, normal management of line of actual control. And this normal management of line actual control will not just stop there. There are phases in that also. So this what I am saying. We, it's have been our stance from uh, April 20 itself when Jal Vaike Joshi was the army commander. And even today, that remains the same way. So as of now, what has happened? We are trying to restore the trust. 
how the trust will get restored it will get restored once we are able to see each other and we are able to convince each other look the buffer zones which are there which have been created we are not creeping and both have to reassure each other Prime Minister Narendra Modi has arrived in Russia to participate in the 16th BRICS summit and was greeted by the Indian diaspora upon his arrival. Prime Minister Modi met President Putin for a delegation level talks referring to the ongoing Russia Ukraine war. Prime Minister Modi said that diplomacy was the only way to end this conflict. The BRICS summit is also expected to focus on key global issues such as climate and economy. Meanwhile, Indigo and Air India have received a flurry of hoax bomb threats yesterday. More than 130 flights have received hoax threats in just the last 8 days, plunging the aviation industry into a state of panic. Speaking on the issue yesterday, the Union Civil Aviation Minister said that the government is planning to strengthen the law against perpetrators of hoax threats. The 17-year-old boy from Chhattisgarh who was apprehended last week for issuing a bomb threat to th to three international flights was allegedly sexually assaulted by another minor inmate at a child correction home in Mumbai the mumbai police has said that they have registered a child sex abuse case at the dongri police station according to reports the police said that the chatisgarh boy was attacked by a 16 year old when he went to the bathroom of his barrack Well with that it's a wrap on this edition of Business 360 more news and updates will continue right here on CNBC TV 18